everybody. So I uh, I picked up this Sega Outrun last week. It was uh, it was great find. I got it for relatively cheap, at least you know I think so, compared to where I in, in the area that I live. And um, I must say the kids love it. But when I got it home, I found out that it was having some problems actually saving your um, your initials on the the leaderboard. So like you know when you get to the end of the your run, and if you had a good run. Then you go ahead and enter in your initials. But um, right now, what I can do is I can toggle through the the letters to enter your initials, but I can't actually input any of those letters. So I had a game going here, it's about to time out. I got like six seconds left before I've got to reach a checkpoint, and that's certainly not going to happen. Then about stage two, and game over. Okay, so. Here I should be able to show you the problem at hand. I've got, come on, all right, so best outrunners. Let's go ahead and enter in our, wait a second. Okay, so I can enter in initials. Let's just do something simple. All right, A, B. Uh-oh, it's not working. So you're, that's me slamming on the gas. You're supposed to be able to press down on the gas pedal and that will input your initial, but that is not working. So what we're gonna do here is, is try and fix that today. Okay, so one of the cool things about this game is that in an attempt to make it more realistic, what they've done for the steering wheel and the, uh, the brake and the gas pedal is that instead of actually just like clicking a switch when you press down on the brake or the gas. It's actually a, it's adjusted by a field of values that can actually be set. So basically as, you know, my, my gas in the resting position sits at one value, but as I press it down slowly and all the way to the bottom, it increases that value, which basically then tells the game, okay, this guy wants to go faster, increase the speed of the car. So. So from that perspective, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, and for 1986, I mean that was that was kind of neat. So what we can do to actually look at what those values are is jump into the diagnostics mode, and to do that, we can just open up the coin door, and um, inside the coin door, you'll have a, a set of switches here. We've got like the service switch and the the test switch. Let's see if I can get a flashlight in there. So you got the test switch, the service switch, volume. Um, there's a button for the motor circuit breaker. Uh, what we want to do is press the test switch button and uh, I'll show you what happens here. So let's try and get that. Okay, so when we press the, the test switch button, we get this screen, right? And what we can do is then scroll down to the input and we, we do that by using the steering wheel. So use the steering wheel to go up or down and we want to go to the input screen and then you you gotta go this is kind of annoying you gotta go down and hit the test button again to to go to that screen but when you're actually there okay so th this is pretty easy so now I can see all right let's see I got my coin uh, all right I'm pressing the start button so you see it says okay and then I've got my gear low gear high gear handle to the le right and to the left. So this is where you can actually see. So it's, the steering wheel, for instance, is represented by a range of hexadecimal values um, that just, it, it varies. So like as I turn the wheel to the left, let me see if I can get that in focus. I'll step back far enough that you can see it. Okay, so as I turn that, you can see exactly what's happening for the steering wheel. And like for instance, if I press the brake, so it's like by default I'm sitting at like 18, and then I press the brake and it goes all the way down to AE or Alpha Echo in hex. Um, but I think my problem is with the accelerator because I'm supposed to be able to enter my initials by pressing down the accelerator. Now if I press it all the way down, it gives me a value of FF, Fox Fox. And that is, that is really beyond the range, according to the operator's manual for OutRun, of what I need to be at. I'm really trying to get this in focus here, I apologize. 
Um, and when I'm just sitting here, not doing anything, I don't even have my foot on the gas right now, I'm getting a value of 6.6. Six. So after I was looking at the, the operator's manual, I noticed that the default value for the acceleration there should be 20, 20x. So what we've got to actually do is take apart this pedal assembly, um, which uses actually, so it's, kind of, it's annoying, you need to go ahead and get a set of these Torx uh, bits. Let's see if I can get that in focus for you. It's really kind of hard. Hold on. Okay, so these Torx bits that have the, the little dimple in the middle. I think this one is a T25, and that's what you need to open up the gas, uh, the, the pedal assembly. So there's seven, uh, seven Torx security screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the other one is down here. So seven. So we're gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna get the camera set up on the tripod again, and we'll take that apart and see what we can do. I there, there should be a potentiometer in there that we can adjust for both the gas and the brake, and we wanna set that to the right value according to the, uh, the manual. Um, so the, the other interesting thing here, real quick, is that, so I, I noticed that when my son was playing this game, he, he is too short to hit the pedal himself. So we, we set up a little stool, and he just can, can play. And you know, the weird thing is, is that he does not, he can't hit the gas, but the car still goes, so I, I think that all of this correlates, right? So because the car is moving, it basically, if the default for the accelerator is supposed to be 20, and instead of my, instead of defaulting to 20, I've got it at 66, well, the game always thinks that you're accelerating. So we're gonna take a look at that. There we go, so I got the tripod set up. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and start undoing some of these screws here. So I'll use my, uh, my handy dandy super cobalt, uh, I don't know, I got this for Christmas uh, two years ago. Fancy screwdriver. But all that really matters is that you got the Torx bit. So if I didn't have that, I'd be out of luck. You can get them on uh, Amazon relatively easy. Um, there's, some, there's some tool supply stores that you can just go pick up a set of the uh, the full security bits at, but they're kind of hard to get at, you know, like your local Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, sometimes you can get, especially if you're ever doing work on like a, a computer or something like that where you need some of the lower, uh, lower number Torx bit screws like a T6 or T8, T10 even, because those, those are kind of hard to come by, but like if you're ever working on maybe like a modern day laptop, um, it, it's kind of a pain. My wife, um, she's got a, or had a, a MacBook, and it was, I had to use all sorts of those Torx screws to get that undone. The Torx screwdrivers to get that undone. This fancy screwdriver really isn't anything special. It's kind of a pain, actually. You can see that the uh, the lower area down here on this is black. I uh, I've seen a couple pictures online where it's supposed to be gray. I'm wondering if I need to shop around and try and find a replacement for that. I mean, who knows? This thing's been around since '86, right? So I have no idea. Yeah, what's new? What's what's been replaced? Uh oh. Okay. Let's let's figure this out here. So this thing's kind of like jammed up on here. I don't know if this is supposed to come out or. I mean, the cool thing about that. All right, let's go ahead and just take the. Uh, oh, I might need to go find a smaller bit here. It looks like I need to take the whole whole pedal out. But I think I need a smaller Torx bit, so I'll, I'll be right back. Anyway, so I, I really didn't, sorry, really didn't need a, uh, a 
smaller Torx bit, those screws that I had on the gas pedal just were ultra gungy. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. So you can see the one on the right, that was a nice clean one that was you know kind of on the, the kickbox here. And the one on the left that is just kind of, I mean it's rusted out, you almost can't even see the the little notches with the Torx bit in. But um, anyway, so I, I finally got the the plate off here and really what we're looking at is right down here. So these are the potentiometer, like, okay, so this is the potentiometer for the accelerator and this is the potentiometer, try and get my shadow out of the way, over here is the potentiometer for the, uh, the, the, the brake. But what we need to do is adjust this guy. So it, I can see there's a little bit of slop down here, but even if, if I basically turn it this way, that lowers the number. If you turn it this way, that increases the number. And that's, that's basically what happens when you press down on the gas. It, it turns in a um, counterclockwise rotation, and that's what causes that, that hexadecimal value to increase. And what's happening is that the, the, re the resistance of that potentiometer is increasing when you basically press on the gas. So <clears throat> what we need to do is effectively adjust this knob. And there's a couple of um, screws on the, the side here. Uh, they call them adjustment screws. So if you look in the in the manual, I'm trying to like focus in while it's dark here. Um, so this screw right down here, they call that the adjustment screw, which is kind of kind of silly. But what what you need to do is we need, we're going to take this out, and then that we should be able to rotate this bracket off, and then pull this gear away from this gear so that we can adjust this to reduce it down to the proper value of uh, 20. So let me, let me set the camera back up here and get this undone and we'll try and rotate this back so that it's at the 20 hex value that the manual says it's supposed to be by default. All right, so I got the uh, bracket here disassembled. And it, like I said, there's two screws on the back side of this. You can see one is right here, and the other one I took out completely. And I had to loosen this one a little bit to make it so that I could kind of rotate this around. But basically, what I can do now is separate this this gear away from that one, so that I can adjust this potentiometer. It basically, okay, I can rotate it all the way that way, or all the way that way. That's the maximum that this thing can be rotated. And as I rotate that, so I, let's say I'll, I'll spin it all the way that way. Let's try and get up on the screen here. So you can see, I will go ahead and rotate that uh, potentiometer real quick. Uh, let's see if I can keep it in focus while I do it. Okay, so I'm spinning it around. So there's all the way to uh, one direction and all the way to the other. So basically, so FF, that's that. That's if I was pushing the pedal down and then all the way back to zero, zero. That's if I was told, that's, I don't even know when that case would ever happen, but the, the owner's manual says that, or the instruction manual, whatever you want to call it, says that it's supposed to be at 20 hex for basically both the brake and the accelerator. So I'm going to adjust my brake as well. Um, and. So what I need to do now that I've got that adjusted to 20 is basically find the sweet spot and then rotate this whole assembly back so that when I push it, it, it makes the, the gear rotate and the whole potentiometer rotate. So I'm going to go ahead and get that at 20, re-screw this back in, and I'm going to adjust my, my, do the same thing for my brake as well. And uh, when I do that, I'm gonna get both of these to be at 20, and I'll, I'll put it back together, and we'll see if things are working out. So I got the camera back up at the tripod here, um, and I, I, I put a few screws back into the, the brake pedal and gas pedal assembly just to kind of get it held back in place. 
And so I adjusted the potentiometer for both my my brake and my accelerator. So now my accelerator it was before it was at 66. Now my target was to get it down to 20. Now 20 is what the uh, you know the operator's manual says should be default, but 20, 23, basically when I screwed everything back in place, I, you know, I tried to set it as best I could at 20, but when I screw everything back in place and just kind of let it, let it set, it, it, it went to 23. And I don't think that's the end of the world. That's probably just a matter of a few, you know, a few ohm difference. Um, my brake was actually pretty good. I mean, it was, I ended up having a stripped screw on the, um, the adjustment screw there. So, it, the adjustment screw, like I said, is not a screw that you can just twist and then all of a sudden the 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 value starts to change by the, you know the default value starts to change. The adjustment screw, what that does is lets you take uh, spin the screw and then kind of just rotate around to try and get to the right value. And you know, like I said, I had to basically take my adjustment screw all the way out, twist the gear around manually to get the accelerator value to a low enough number so that it was close enough to the default. Um, I definitely think that I'm going to have to go ahead and adjust my handle assembly. I may do that in this video, we'll see. Um, to, it, it, basically to do that, I think I'm going to have to take apart the, uh, the steering wheel assembly. Which I think you only have to do by a couple of these screws right here. And the whole steering wheel assembly just flips down. So I, I may do that. We'll we'll see. Um, but let's let's go ahead and check to see if the um, ability to enter our initials is is back in working order, or at least you know back based on when this game was released. Because I've never seen it work. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of um, test mode. Uh, let's see. Jump out of there and. Steer, 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 steer. I, I think this is definitely why I need to adjust my steering wheel. Okay. All right. End of diagnostics. I don't know if you can see this on the uh, on the recording, but this system does have some some screen burn in there. I've definitely got an outrun logo right in the middle. You can see some of the outrunners uh, faded up top here, and, and I can also see the credits and the, you know, 1986 copyright Sega. I can totally see that stuff when I look at, you know, a nice um, light screen. Even now, I can just see it in the blue background. Um, all right, so let me let me uh, pretend I got a coin in here. Let's start it up and let's go. Let's see how far I can go on this. Uh, all right, let's see. Oh. Problem. So my accelerator, I pushed it down, and it looks like I've got an issue. When I push it down, it is not coming back up. I gotta, I gotta pull things out and take a look at it. So like, I can, I can show you. Yeah, I'm rolling here, but uh, I'll take the camera down. It's stuck. So I only put, I put my two screws back in the bottom here and one right there. Let me take that out. Let me try and fix it. See what's going on. Oh, All right, so it's never easy. I, I think I figured out what my problem was. So this adjustment screw that you've got right here. Now that's that's on kind of a, um, a you know a sleeve here that you can adjust it up or down. And, and in effect, what you're doing there by using the adjustment screw, you're not changing the value of the potentiometer or anything like that, like I previously said. What you're doing is you're adjusting how tight that this gear is here to the bottom one. Now the bottom one is what has a spring tied around this rod. So there's there's a circular spring. Let's see if I can get on that, and my dog's probably gonna bark. Um, so you can see the circular spring right in that area that's tied to uh, to this gear. It's, it's connected, and when you push down on the accelerator, um, you're going to rotate that around. And my problem is that I had this screw, which is tied to the bracket here. It was I, I had it pulled down too far that way. So 
effectively this gear was causing a lot of friction. It was, it was too tight against this gear here. So when I put it down, it was just staying because it, it was just uh, pushing against it so much. So I, I've loosened that up now, and now my my accelerator has a good spring back action, and it looks like my uh, my value up top on the uh, diagnostic is still pretty good, uh, close to 20. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in, and we'll see if we can get our uh, our high score uh, initials. Out. All right. So I coin back up here. And let's go ahead and get started uh, and see if this little fix that we put in place works. I'll try and set a high score, but I'm not very good at this game. I remember uh, when I was younger, uh, they had this game at a uh, local laundromat. I really need to shift gears here. It's going to kill my time. Um, and we had moved, and one of the things that uh, hadn't moved yet with us was the, the washer, the dryer. So we had to go to the local laundromat for a little while, only like a week or two, but um, I remember after I went the first time that they had, you know, Sega Outrun there in the laundromat. So the next time I came, I really had a stack of quarters and probably just burned through the whole whole roll trying to uh, play this game because there was nothing else there. It's either that or read a book. Oops, sorry. Who wants to read a book when there's an arcade machine there? Oh, oh, almost ran into that red red car there. Off of the road. That's what I get for looking at the camera. I think this is good enough. It, good enough, though. I'll be able to at least get on the leaderboard because, like I said, this game... I don't have any save kit in there. It is white every time I unplug it, which is pretty much every night. I do not leave the arcade on all the time. Save power. Though I have not made it past stage four. I haven't played it like crazy, but. Oh, into the windmill. Ooh. It's like trying to drive on the highway. I mean, this is not like most racing games. You were actually driving on a road with a bunch of other cars, just as hazards. Maybe I get all Mario Kart on it, drive off into the cornfield and cut across the track. I don't think that'll work. Oh, game over. Okay. Oh, did I get out of focus a little bit here? Let me, let me tweak this. There we go. All right. But I should be able to set a high score now. So let's see. Let's see if it works. So, all right. Let's just try something simple. Uh, T. Hey, it worked. S. T. Bingo. All right, so fixing the gas pedal ended up fixing our problem to be able to set a high score. Who would have thought that would have uh, 
would have worked. But, okay, uh, you know, one of the other things that I need to do is play with the steering wheel on this. I, I, l let me zoom out. You can see what, or, or tilt the camera down. You can see that this is not, it's not right. I mean, my, my steering wheel is like this. I want it to be like that. I'm going to see if I can adjust it to get that back in order. Um, I mentioned this earlier, so there's a couple screws. There's one here. Um, let's see, another one back behind the steering wheel here. And then over here. So you can see all, all three of those. And I think all I have to do is undo those three uh, those three screws and get those out. And those are not, um, ironically, those don't appear to be the, the Torx bit screws with the, with the dimple in them. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. And I, I, maybe that's my game. I don't know. I mean, those just look to be regular, um, you know, hex type screws. So let, let me go find the right screwdriver and I'll, the, the cool thing is uh, when I was looking in the manual, this whole steering wheel assembly just rotates out. It, the, the whole thing is supposed to just flip right out so that it's easy maintenance. And that was one of the neat things about the, the gas pedal down here is that it, it easily came undone. So. Let's see. Let's see if we can do that. All right, so I, I got one screw out so far. I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest out. I found the right bit that I needed. And these screws are a lot, a lot bigger. I mean, these, these are almost like bolts, you know, that hold this thing in. I think it's just these three screws. I'll have to double check. I've got the manual kind of sitting uh, sitting to the side here. I can feel this thing kind of getting ready to rotate out. Oh, yep, there it goes. And I can see why this is cracked. Someone did the same thing that I just did there. All right, so, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me uh, uh, flip this around. It's gonna hit the coin door here. So this is pretty neat. Let me rotate. So when you rotate the or when you flip the whole thing out, I mean, it, it's all right there. So any adjustments that you need to make. You know, I, I bet the guys back that were actually, you know, for the coin op companies going out having to service these things probably love this box because you didn't have to reach around all back inside of it to, to get at this stuff. You could just do a couple of screws and all of a sudden you're there. <clears throat> I can see that I'm, I'm running low on battery here for the camera, so let me, uh, let me do some research and figure out what I need to do here. I got a feeling this isn't going to be as simple as the brake and the uh, uh, gas pedal. And I need to let my uh, my battery recharge. So it's going to be a few minutes. <clears throat> so I got the uh, the control, the, the steering wheel and everything pulled apart here. I'm going to try and do this quick because I'm running out of uh, battery life on my camera. I've been fighting with it all night long, just throwing the battery on the charger for like a quick five minutes or so. Um, but I found something that I did not want to see, and that's this gear right here that I'm looking at. This is the main gear that is in the steering wheel, and you can see I have a big old crack on that. And I am probably going to try and look online, see if I can find a replacement for that. If not, um, what I'm going to do maybe is take this and spin it around so that at least it's not rolling over this gear. I mean, th this is its resting place, its natural resting place is right on the crack. Um, and, and maybe that's why the crack is there in the first place, but uh, I'm gonna try and, and fix that in another video, especially when I'm not fighting with my battery. Um, as far as the, uh, the steering wheel being centered up, you can see that that can be a adjusted by this. It's not necessarily by that piece, but that as, acts as a guide. So 
my steering wheel is a little askew right now, but if I turn that facing right at me like an arrow, now my steering wheel is nice and straight. And I don't know what was going on here. I mean, it looks like somebody just just took a hammer to this and tried to lock this screw into place. Eh, kind of a hack job. I, I We'll see. I'm going to have to look up all the stuff about this um, steering wheel assembly. But uh, that'll be another video. Anyway, hope you guys found this, uh, found this useful. Uh, I thought it was a pretty weird thing that I couldn't save my high scores. And the fact that the gas pedal actually worked in game, um, you know, l regularly. But for some reason, I could not input the actual high score. It was, it was really weird. So uh, apparently, just by adjust, adjusting that uh, potentiometer or, or the uh, the gear that controls that potentiometer, that was enough. So it's got to be, it's got to start at a low enough value and then uh, raise up to some other some other point. So that's it. That's uh, that's basically how to fix the input on uh, Sega Outrun. I hope you guys uh, found this uh, useful. And bye.